In this lecture, we explore the formal definition of the limit. If we write the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l, we mean loosely that as x gets close to the number a, the value of f should be forced close to l. Stated another way, more importantly, we can always force f of x to be close to l by making sure that x gets close to a. We can make this precise. We'll say this in several ways. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l means that for any tolerance allowed on the y-axis, where f of x is, we can force f of x to be within that tolerance of l by making x close to a. If we're trying to hit l, no matter how small the error you insist on, we can make sure f of x is within that error or within that tolerance of l. f of x and l will be forced to be close. To give a mathematical value to this closeness, we're going to assign a measurement epsilon, a Greek letter epsilon, for our tolerance. This is the error or tolerance on the y-axis. And this is going to mean the value of epsilon is going to be what we mean by being close to l along the y-axis. Given that, we're going to assign another measurement, delta, for being close to a along the x-axis. So the limit x approaches a of f of x equals l means that given this tolerance epsilon, we can find a value delta so that as long as x and a along the x-axis are within delta of each other, then f of x and l are forced to be within epsilon of each other. Delta will be a difference or distance along the x-axis. Epsilon will be a distance or difference along the y-axis. So this put into mathematical symbols, this limit means that for any epsilon greater than zero, there's a delta greater than zero, so that as long as the difference between x and a is less than delta, x and a are within delta of each other, then f of x and l are within epsilon of each other. Note the use of the absolute value sign. In mathematics, it's often common to think of the absolute value sign as representing distance. So I read equation two above as saying, as long as the distance from x to a is smaller than delta, then the distance from f of x to l is smaller than epsilon. About the absolute value, for example, the absolute value of x, we insist on it being non-negative, is the distance from x to zero. More generally, the absolute value of a minus b is the distance between a and b. The absolute value sign allows us to give a positive answer to the problem without worrying about whether a or b is the larger number. For example, how far is it from three to seven? Well, that, the absolute value of 3 minus 7 is 4. The distance from 3 to 7 is the same as the distance from 7 to 3. Either way, um, subtract, put it within the absolute value sign, and you get distance. All right, so this limit means that for any epsilon greater than 0, there's a delta greater than 0, so that as long as the distance from x to a is smaller than delta, then the distance from f of x to l is smaller than epsilon. Let's do an example. Uh, the limit as x approaches 3 of x cubed is 27. Um, so we're going to explore that by setting epsilon equal to 0.1. This is the error measurement in the y direction. And we're going to try to find a value of delta that forces that error measurement. As long as x is within delta of 3, f of x should be within epsilon of 27. So let's, uh, there's the definition up above. Let's look at a table of values. If I want um, x minus 3 to be less than delta, the distance from x to 3 being smaller than delta to force the distance from f of x to 27 be smaller than 0.1, then this means that f of x should be between um, 26.9, that should be, not 99, 26.9 and 27.1. If the distance between f of x and 27 is 0.1, then f of x should be between 26.9 and 27.1. Here's a table of values uh, given by a calculator, or by Wolfram Alpha. And let's uh, take a look at this table of values in the next slide. Again, I want um, f of x between 26.9 and 27.1. Here's my table. What should delta be? Well, let's look at the y values on the right side. Notice that 26.9 as a y value goes with an x value of 2.99629, while a y value of 27.10 goes with an x value of 3.00370. On the left side, how far is 
99629, that top red value, from 3? Or, at the bottom of the list, 3.00370, how far is that from 3? That will be, one of those will be my delta. If the limit's 27 and my tolerance is 0.1, then we want to be in the range between 26.9 and 27.1. And it turns out then that X needs to fall in this interval. X needs to be between 2.99629 and 3.00370. And so delta is going to be um, 0 0.00370. That's the smallest of the distances from three of those values. Two, y values fall between 26.9 and 27.1. X values fall in that interval. Look at those numbers, 2.99 whatever and 3.00 whatever, and take the ask how far are those numbers from 3. The smallest answer will be your delta. There's delta. So if X falls within 3 plus or minus delta, Y will fall within 27 plus or minus epsilon. That means as X approaches 3, Y approaches 27. Now, in some later presentations, we'll do some examples with epsilon and delta, but uh, let me finish off quickly by looking at the definition as the formal definition of a limit at infinity. If we have a limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l, this means that for any tolerance epsilon greater than zero, we can find a natural number n. Think of this as a big natural number, so that as long as x is beyond n, bigger than n, the distance from l to f of x is less than epsilon. In words, given any tolerance, we can force f of x to be within that tolerance as long as we make x really large. As long as x is big, bigger than n, f of x will be close to l, at least within epsilon of l. So formally, in symbols, here's my definition for um, the limit as x approaches infinity. We will not need this precise definition of the limit as x approaches infinity in this class, but it's common in higher mathematics and engineering where questions about limits are common and necessary. In the next presentation, we'll explore more with the epsilons and deltas.